Welcome to my channel. Kicking butterflies is quite difficult and it doesn't necessarily increase your speed by much. You might start thinking, if it doesn't give me much speed, why should I spend my time perfecting the technique? Well, it's important because it greatly affects your body position, which in turn affects your rhythm. These elements combined contribute to your speed. We'll start by doing some dry land exercises. This ankle exercise is effective for improving the flexibility of your feet. You can use a fitness mat to do the exercise comfortably. Get down on your knees and sit on your heels to get into the starting position. During the exercise, feet should stay in the same position as while swimming, meaning that the big toes should stick to each other and the heels should spread apart. The best practice is to keep sitting on the heels with your arms behind you and your knees are able to move upwards. Such perfect technique requires months of practice. Most likely, you will feel pain in your feet when moving the knees upwards. In this case, don't move them up to the very end. Move them only to the point at which you start to feel the pain. In this exercise, you should always get a little pain, otherwise flexibility won't progress. Slowly on, you will reach great flexibility and your feet movement will be more relaxed and effective. You should do 3 sets with 12 repetitions in each. It is possible that these dry-land exercises can cause some pain. However, it is impossible to improve flexibility without feeling a little pain. It is crucial to understand that it's not the kind of pain that you might feel when you are hit. Also, when you finish doing the exercise, the slight pain should immediately leave. In butterfly, for every one arm stroke, you should perform two kicks. The kick is done by both feet simultaneously. Non-simultaneous or freestyle kicks is a common mistake, which many beginners do. In this video, I will talk about common mistakes in butterfly swimming and how to avoid and fix them. The first kick starts in the middle of the arm stroke movement, in such a way that the kick is finished at the same time as the arm stroke. Remember, that the first kick has less power than the second one. This is because a powerful kick needs a big amplitude from up to down. But the higher you move your legs for a kick, the more water resistance you will gain, so your speed will be slower. After an arm stroke, you will have high speed. At this point, you need to perform a smooth first kick, so that you gain additional speed and so that the water resistance doesn't increase. The second kick is done at the moment when the arms are entering the water. You might wonder, why is this kick is stronger? It is because your speed decreases while you are returning your hands forward. At the moment, when you do the second kick, your speed is already quite low and you really don't want to lose any more speed. So you need a big amplitude and must do a stronger kick. The knees should be slightly bent before the kick. There is a common mistake when the knees are too bent before the first kick. As a result, the speed decreases and the body sinks into the water. It is very important to combine the wave-like movements of the body with the kick. You can help yourself in keeping up the correct working tempo of the legs by counting the kicks in a series. One, two, one, two. 1, 2. Keep in mind that there is a little pose between the two kicks in the series and a bigger pose between the series themselves. Another common mistake is doing freestyle kicks. The movement of the feet are not simultaneous. If this is something you want to fix, you must always stay focused on keeping your feet together. There is a good way to train these. Put an elastic band around your feet, so they are stuck together. Remember, this is a good option only if you are confident about your swimming skills. Swimming with an elastic band on your feet may cause an uncomfortable feeling and it may also be dangerous. Be careful! Also, you might see that some swimmers raise their legs so high that the legs can be seen above the water. This is not correct. The legs must be fully in the water. 
The swimmer gains the speed only from the movements in the water. Any body movements above the water surface slows you down. To fix this mistake, you should always monitor how you're doing the kicks. Try different ways, compare your feelings and get a friend to watch you. In my first butterfly lesson, you have practiced the body movements by doing dolphin kicks with the hands close to the legs. Now you can train the kicks by using your experience from the previous practice. Keep up the constant working rhythm of the legs and do the movements with a large amplitude during the exercise. Always double check that the resistance which you feel from the water as you do the leg movements is not too strong. A difficult but useful technique drill is performing the dolphin kicks in a vertical position. It's not an easy drill, but it shows if your legs are working correctly or not. If your technique is good, then you'll be able to stay for a long time in a vertical position, because the power of your kicks will push you upwards. If the technique is not correct, then your body will be shaking forwards and backwards quite much. This exercise should be done with smooth movements of the legs back and forth, without the body shaking. You can also swim side dolphin kicks to practice the smoothness of the movements. I described the exercise in the first lesson. In the first lesson, I talked about dolphin kicks on the back. Then we focus on body movements. Now we are going to focus on kicking. The knees should not appear above the water surface during the exercise. If they do, it is something that you really must fix. The legs should constantly be in the water. Remember how it felt while you were doing the technical drills. Now start swimming with butterfly kicks while looking for the same feeling. There are a few ways to swim while just kicking. The most comfortable and suitable for most people is when the hands are in front of the body, stretch forward without a kickboard. You can also use flippers for the same exercise. Try to achieve the same feeling as when doing the technical drills. The second way to train butterfly kicks is with a kickboard. This is a good practice for those swimmers whose body are flexible enough and who can do smooth body movements. If your body is not so flexible, I recommend doing the butterfly kicks with your hands stuck to the side of your body or with your hands out in front of your body. Swimming with flippers will help beginners to experience the correct sensation of moving through the water and will help them to practice proper technique. Remember to always control the body movements and the legs while swimming with flippers. Setting up the kicks is our second step of building good butterfly technique. It is crucial to learn to do the kicks correctly in a relaxed manner and only then move forward to the next lesson. In the next video, you will learn how to do an arm stroke. You have probably already seen that obtaining proper butterfly technique can take some time. What do you think? How much time does it usually take? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Like the video and make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss my next video.